Hi, if like me, you use Notion in any way to organize your life and knowledge, there are hundreds of additional apps and tools, plugins you can find to complement your second brain that unlock amazing new powers. And these brilliant additional apps will supercharge your Notion setup for very little cost. So I've tried a lot, and these are the best I've found to add to your Notion workspace or second brain. But in the spirit of doing personal knowledge management right, I've also divided them into four categories inspired by Tiago Forte's code method. So by the end of this video, you will also have learned the essential strategy I think everyone should know to effectively manage their ideas. Cool, right? But before we dive into the apps, I have a quick update on this. This is my Notion Life OS template. So first of all, a huge thank you to the thousands of you who already use and own a copy of one of my Life OS second brain templates. The simplified Notion Life OS has already been updated for 2024. And based on all of your feedback for the complete Life OS and the bundle of the creative OS, I'm working super hard on finishing the 2024 versions of those. I promise my friends it is in the works, but since moving between templates can be involved, I want to do this right and do it once. So I promise it will be released and shared with you existing owners ASAP. And if you are new here, there is a waiting list for the new 2024 version of my celebrated Life OS template linked below on bettercreating.com. It's my all-in-one system for organizing your notes, tasks, goals, clippings, and knowledge all in one place. And on that note, Section one is C4 Capture, is all about saving valuable information from the internet and the world around you with as little friction as possible. And these tools are some of the lesser known options that might just change the game for you. Now, I've recently been trying a few meeting note takers and by far the best of these is TLDV and Otter. AI. Both have great free plans, particularly TLDV, the best out there, I think, as it also records video. And they both plug into your Zoom, Google Meets, and Microsoft Teams chat to transcribe and AI summarize the conversation. So I discovered TLDV this month working with the Generalist company, who are helping me build out some AI and automation tools to optimize my template business and content management for this channel. I also love that there are options to push timestamp moments directly to Slack, HubSpot, Salesforce, and yes, Notion. Now, by contrast, Otter does require a paid plan for AI summaries, but the cool thing is it offers a phone app for recording and transcribing in-person meetings. Great for offline working particularly, so I love just popping that on the desk when I have an important meeting I might want to remember and it will record it. But there is a hack for that with TLDV. You just need to turn on Zoom, invite your agent into the meeting, and you can just record in-person meetings too, which is rather cool. Now, I don't know about you, but I find I spend a lot of time taking screenshots and recordings, sometimes for ideas and inspiration, sometimes for demos and sharing issues. Well, I can't recommend this next app enough. It's CleanShot. This is a simple app that sits in your Mac menu and lets you capture pages as images, do scrolling capture, and my favorite, record the screen as a video or a GIF. The final option, creating a GIF, is a lovely feature to use with Notion. Why not try capturing something as a GIF and then adding it to the cover of a Notion page? It could be for vibes and nice design, or like me, you might want to use it for capturing a bit of inspiration for your own content creation. Okay, I admit it. I can't leave this section without briefly mentioning my favorite Notion plugin of all time, Readwise, hashtag not sponsored. Now, I think I pay around $90 a year for this, and it's been one of my best investments since it's become the central engine of my second brain system other than Notion. It connects with your Kindle. These are all the highlights of all the books I've been highlighting recently in my Kindle. And so if I go into, for example, Designing Your Life, I will see within it all of those quotes listed together and any notes that I make on them will also show up. You can also connect it with tweets, that can go direct into it by mentioning Readwise and podcasts. I'm using my podcast app of choice, Snipped. And in each of these apps, you can create clippings, notes, highlights, and then by connecting them to Readwise, trust that they will all collect in one place. I've even got articles that I have snipped using the Readwise extension that sits within my browser. That is cool. 
Now stage two is to then connect and sync and export your highlights into another place. It links with loads of places. So if you're someone that keeps your second brain in Rome, a really great place for writers, you can do it. Evernote, Obsidian, but of course here is Notion. Now I've just realized I need to reconnect with Notion. So I'm gonna configure it. When you first build it, it will create a Readwise library in Notion and you can then organize everything in that with subject tags, a type of entry, and then link it into the rest of your system. So I'm logged in and then I can start the export. It will send them into the system. And in my knowledge and clippings, you can now see it all sitting within Notion. And if I click into a book, there is everything that I've collected within the system. So for example, anything you want by Derek Sivers, I've been reading that recently. It's all dropped it into Notion. I can then link this to a project. So if I want to link to a content project that we're working on right now, there you go, this is this video. I can link it to this video. And then when I jump through to the script, I can see the knowledge linked into it. Oh my, just try it, it's huge. Section two of the second brain code is O for organize. And there is one app that can help you get information organized effectively, even before it lands in your system. But before I show you that, we have to remember a key mindset. A second brain is a factory, not a warehouse. So remember that it is better to focus on organizing around your active projects rather than on folder structures and filing systems. Or to put it another way, when you encounter new information, Think about how you can help move forward something you're currently working on. Now, as Tiago Forte says, surprisingly, focusing on taking action will also help you combat information overwhelm. And yes, there are two web clipper extensions that can help you organize information as you capture it. The joy of these are that they mean you'll be able to file and create connections to projects and live areas as you find it. So let's say I wanted to clip this into my system. The first one I would recommend is Save to Notion. Here it is as a Chrome extension. You just add the Chrome extension, look for Save to Notion Chrome extension, and you can do this. It's an amazing clipper that lets you capture the web content directly into the Notion workspace. And it's as easy as just clicking a button in your browser and then the content, whether it's an article, image, or entire web page, is saved into your Notion database of choice. This tool is perfect to quickly collect things, particularly because you can build forms. So for example, if I edit this one, I can select the database I want it to go into. There it is, my knowledge and clippings. I can set what I want to be able to adjust within here. I could, if I add new fields, I'll see all of the columns within it. So I might want to add status in there as well, for example. Now, if I save and go back, I can now add this building a second brain. I want to add the entire web page. I don't need to use a template and I'm going to select the status as on reading list. I will now save the page. If I now jump to my Notion page under on reading list, there is the entry and I can open that up and see all of the information that we clipped from it. And of course, this would have been filled in if I wanted to. Now, the superpower of using this is that what you can do is when you add a field, you can add a related project, link to projects that you want to link the material to. And that means in my reading list, I can make sure that I am planning what project it's gonna link to, my digital product design. Cool. Now, the second web clipper you should make sure you also keep an eye out for is Thomas Frank's answer to this system called Flylighter. You can get an invite to sign up to this as we speak because it's not out yet. It will work in a number of different browsers, capture links, articles, highlights and more into Notion. So if you want to see it demoed, jump over to flylighter.com and check it out. D is for distill. The best perspective I've heard on how we should distill information in a second brain is to ensure that you are extracting the pieces of knowledge most relevant to your current goals. As Tiago Forte says, a powerful mindset for interacting with our notes is to design notes with our future self in mind. So every time you create a note or make an edit, you can make it just a little easier to find and make use of it next time. This can include defining key terms, inserting placeholders, and creating easy access summaries to remind you what's there. And for this, well, I think the solution is hiding right there in Notion, 
adding the Notion AI add-on to any free or paid plan. And I think it's worth considering for $10 a month. I use it for repurposing writing into other formats like Twitter threads and then creating new elements on a Notion page. And my favorite is adding custom summary properties in my journaling and knowledge databases for a quick overview of information. Let me show you what I mean. This is my prompted journal template. I've got a load of entries that go in. If we now click into, I just have to write, I've written something here about sleep, for example. And so I've created an AI summary here, which is a new property. You can select AI as an option. And then when you edit it, I can see that it's an auto update on the page edits and I've given it key information I would like it to extract. So I'm saying it's a prompted page to create a one paragraph overview. So that then means that if I refresh this, you'll see that this is summarizing what's in the page. If we jump back to my weekly reflection, this is currently just a prompt, so it'll probably just summarize that it is a prompt if I refresh it. The weekly reflection page includes prompts for reflecting and so on and so forth. But once you've written into it, it will obviously update it. And you could do exactly the same, right, for your knowledge and clippings system. You can jump into here, add a property, new property, AI summary, try it on this page. And maybe what I want to do with this is wrap the column, make it a little wider and we can see the summaries of those first items are listed. Now, I'm just gonna to jump to my script for this video because I want to give a notable mention here to how well Speechify works with Notion. I've been using it to quickly read out selected text to me on my MacBook. There's also an app that you can scan books into. It works on pretty much any web page or emails. It's amazing. But with Notion, it's particularly useful. Why? Let me demo. Well, one reason is it's proven that we retain more of what we read when we listen and read at the same time. Check out my how to read more video after this if you want to learn more. Speechify is a paid text to speech service with a free trial, but if you value it, it's a great deal. Currently at around $135 a year with occasional offers. The final category in our code strategy is E4 Express. The focus here is turning your knowledge into creative output that has an impact on others. For me, this is about thinking about your second brain in a different way to place the emphasis on creating and shipping things, not storing stuff. I guess the important plugin, and I will get to some real apps in a moment, is really you. It just depends on what you want to do with it, right? Some of you might be students writing essays. Maybe you're a creator or a business owner like me. Maybe you're training for a profession. Let me know what you use your Notion setup or whatever second brain setup you use in the comments. All I can share is what is relevant to me. And these next couple of tools, I think, are relevant to many people who are creating something online. My favorite Notion plugins have to be super.so. It's a fantastic SEO friendly website builder which can allow you to use custom domains fonts and analytics it will allow you to format the pages into a designed UI for the viewer directly from Notion so for easy and fast website updates this could be amazing for many people and the second one is Q for Notion it's an X stroke Twitter plugin that allows you to create and schedule tweets in a Notion database and publish them directly to Notion it works for 10 tweets a month and two threads for the free plan you can connect it to to any database and then set a database property as the scheduling date. Pretty cool. And three, if you are getting serious about no code automation, definitely check out Zapier or Make to embrace automations and connections between Notion and hundreds of other productivity apps. So, so far we found a bunch of amazing tools that add new functionality to Notion, but if you truly wanna make the most of Notion as a simple to use and powerful life organization system, I definitely would encourage you to come over to bettercreating.com to check out some of my free and larger Notion templates. And of course you can sign up to that life os 2024 waiting list at forward slash life os and you should watch this video next for the full tour of how i've simplified the notion second brain in my simplified life os setup and discover more great ideas and tech in the bottom one it would be great if you subscribed if you haven't amazing if you drop me a thumbs up and i'll see you on the next one bye